The Liberals dodged a bullet of sorts with the recent breaking story of the father and son terrorist tag team that was planning to carry out a terrorist attack. And I don't mean they've missed a figurative bullet because the attack was thwarted. I mean they dodged it because this happened in the middle of summer while the House of Commons is in recess and Canadians are drinking what little beer they can afford. Now the onus is on the Conservatives to find a way to reignite this topics when our MPs reconvene in Ottawa several weeks from now. Chances are they won't have too much trouble keeping the specter of terrorism hot for the fall session. Looks like we have quite the abundance of it. Things really aren't looking good for the Liberals as far as their immigration policy has taken them. It was later revealed that the man you see in that video had been arrested for his actions. Social media's reaction to news of his arrest shows you how the tide has turned. The majority of commenters not only cheered him on for his actions, but several commenters stated they'd be ready to contribute to a GoFundMe for his legal defense in the event the police do eventually press charges against them. The only silver lining is that the Liberals are starting to realize they've crapped the bed. It only took nine years, but the realization is finally materializing. One prominent Liberal went on a limb and made the following statements about Canada's temporary foreign worker program. Abuse of the program is not rare. It is far too common and it must end immediately. Here is how to do it. First, the temporary foreign worker program needs to be scaled back dramatically over time and refocused on its original purpose, to fill jobs on a limited basis when no Canadian workers can be found. Second, Canada needs to recommit itself to bringing permanent immigrants here who have a path to citizenship. This would return us back to first principles and purpose of immigration, which is nation building. Finally, the government should tighten the labor market option approval process to to ensure that only businesses with legitimate needs are able to access the program. The temporary foreign worker program is broken. Action must be taken and the government must explain to all Canadians why it took a series of high profile examples of program abuse before the conservatives acknowledge the flaws in their temporary foreign worker program. So by now, you're probably a little confused. Why is it that the conservatives need to acknowledge flaws in their temporary foreign worker program? Well, that's because the author of the words you just heard is none other than Justin Trudeau. And Justin Trudeau wrote those words back in 2014. That was 10 years ago. And he's writing about the exact same mess the liberals are presently embroiled in. So that letter of Trudeau's is cause for concern because you see what Trudeau wrote in that letter is in fact true. Furthermore, it's also true that the conservatives opened up the pathway to illegal immigration all those years back, which means, and I've been saying this all along, if you think Pierre Polyev will fix all of Canada's immigration woes, you are very sadly mistaken. Getting Polyev to write not only Trudeau's wrongs, but also Harper's, will require a tremendous amount of pressure from voters. So to get you in the mood to cast that pressure on Polyev, let's take a look at Brampton as a precursor to what we can expect Canada to become if we don't get any adult supervision anytime soon. Essentially, these landlords you see in the video are fighting to preserve living conditions such as these. Let's go. 
19 students living in a three-bedroom townhouse in Brampton. I was called to go list this house today, and I found out that there's 19 students living in a three-bedroom townhouse. There's no way I'm going to list it, but can you imagine listing that house? What if it does get sold? What if they don't move out? You go to the landlord and tenant board? How long is the hearing for that? Two years? Three years? Jesus Christ, no wonder this country is going down the drain. Three bedrooms, 17 students, four of which are living in an unfinished basement on a mattress. I was with an investor looking at a few homes in Windsor today, and this is one of the homes we came across. Now, the landlord promises to have everyone out um, at the time of closing, but um, I don't know. I kind of feel bad for the students in this one. I don't know. I do. Most of us have heard the expression, import the third world, get the third world. This is literally the case with the battle between the city of Brampton and its landlords. Brampton introduced a licensing plan for apartments in a desperate attempt to cut back on the amount of illegal living conditions where immigrants are packed like sardines into unsafe and unsanitary living conditions. Those landlords want to keep things just the way they are. Who can blame them when they have an ample supply of suckers lying their way into the country, then hitting the streets in protest when the terms they agreed to expire? Mass immigration is the crack cocaine of first world governments. With large influxes of migrants, governments can boast that they're growing and borrow more money as a result. It's a Ponzi scheme, and bringing that Ponzi scheme to an end means making Canada's economy look bad for an undetermined period of time. This is why what Canada needs most is an anti-hero politician. The type of leader who'd be willing to go down in one term because his policies are so incredibly unpopular, but they are also 100% necessary. Polyev doesn't look like the leader for that job. What's your take? Please feel free to disagree or agree in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.